welcoming. My name is Bob Jazokas. I'm jumping ahead here. I'm the principal here at the high school. Welcome to the NHS um, information night. I usually have more to say to the students at the actual NHS induction ceremony. Um, and tonight, I'm just going to introduce the two advisors for NHS. They're standing right over there, Mrs. Doyle and Mrs. Hagedorn. And they're going to take you through some information. Um, and it'll last maybe about 25-ish minutes, I think. Thank you all for coming. So like Bob said, uh, my name is Jess Doyle, and this is Lauren Hagedorn. We are the two co-advisors for NHS this year. This will be quick and brief. This uh, presentation is actually geared toward the students, so it'll say a lot of things where it won't make sense to parents, but just convert that as if you were one of the students. So welcome to our 237 candidates this year. The breakdown this year is pretty similar to years past. So we have invited 185 juniors and 52 seniors. That 237 candidates, those are the ones eligible from our 600 plus total juniors and senior classes. So you now have an opportunity to enter the selection process. If selected, you will join the 124 current members that were inducted last December. So we have this question, what is National Honor Society? So we need to be upfront that it is a commitment. So not only are you committing your time, but you're also committing your expertise and your willingness to maybe take a step outside of your normal box. It's a privilege. It's a recognition of your scholarship, scholastic achievement and your scholastic achievement yet to come. For the bulk of the eligible students, they are juniors, so they have the rest of their junior year and their entire senior year to perform. It's an opportunity to be given and to take new responsibilities. So students are typically 16, 17 years old when they do this. It's a prime time in their life to start testing out their responsibilities. It's a way to give back through service to the school and to the community that they have given to you. We are offered a lot of opportunities where students can help BHS, but then many times we also have people coming in from the community who are asking for our help as well. And it's a showcase of exemplar peers for younger BHS and Lurgio students. Probably the like, most favorite activity that we do for NHS is we offer tours to the eighth grade students coming up to the high school. So on their very last day of school at Lurgio, the NHS members break up into groups and take them around the school. And that's one of the um, things that our members like doing the most. These are just some reflections that students have written. When students submit hours for us when they have done a service project, we often ask that they write a reflection to talk about what they did or why they liked what they did. So we wanted to just be clear that there are a lot of good things that are attached to NHS and that people are having positive reflections at the end of it. So if you look, these are through the last like four or five years. We have one that says, through tutoring, I have reaffirmed the importance of volunteering for myself and others, and I will continue to volunteer. So something like that we love reading because it's part of our core. Um, one of our pillars is the service, but we love the idea of students being able to then take that and continue it even when they leave BHS. And then there are even more, some uh, more in-depth ones from this past year, Megan Spencer, Ellie Mullen, and Emma Stahl. And again, when we do this for students during the week two, this will be a good opportunity for them to recognize that the impact that these different service opportunities have on the students themselves. We do wanna make it clear that it is not some of these things. So membership to NHS is not a right that you are now guaranteed. It is not just an award and then you're done. It is not something to be considered lightly. It is a time commitment. So if you are a student or if you know your student has many things on their plate, it is perfectly okay for you to say that they cannot commit to that time. It is not a guaranteed entrance to the college you want to go to. And it is not a must have requirement for your college application. 
Obviously, it helps. It looks wonderful on college applications, but it is not a necessity to get into the school of your choice. So that ties into this next question. Do I have to be an NHS to get into the college I want? The answer is no, you do not. Of course, colleges love to see well-rounded students, students who are exploring service opportunities, leadership opportunities, opportunities that help build their character, all of those things NHS helps with, but it is not the only thing that colleges are looking at. And then is helping a community like NHS succeed a goal that I could value beyond my own success? This is a question we want students to actually take and consider. So when you become a member of NHS, you have to start thinking about our chapter as a whole. So we have a big chapter right now with just the seniors, we have 124 members. When we add juniors, it'll be up over 200. So you have to make the decision, like do you want to help everybody succeed or are you just looking for something personal for yourself? There are member obligations, so this gets at the time commitment that I was talking about. So we expect that in a single year, a student will be able to do five hours of peer tutoring, five hours of chapter service, and then 10 hours of individual service projects. So if a student um, selects to do this for a junior and senior year, that means by the end of senior year, those numbers, numbers will be doubled. So it would be 10 hours of peer tutoring, 10 hours of chapter service, and 20 hours of individual service projects. A few more member obligations. We do have meetings that start at 7.15 in the morning. So we know that sometimes that is not an easy time to get students here by, but that is something that we expect. Every first Thursday of the month, we're here in the theater. And then second and third Thursdays of the month, we break our group up in half, and then we meet in one of the humanities classrooms. No matter which day, it's always that 7.15 start time. There are $20 dues, so that pays for induction supplies, cords at graduation, you get a little pin for induction, and then various other activities throughout the year. Um, there will be other committee specific meetings, like I mentioned, there may be a time like when you're planning next year's induction that you have to stay after school or you have to attend induction for the next year's class. And if there are any other formal events, we expect your attendance at those as well. We're gonna talk a little bit about the selection process, which is what you guys are probably interested in. This is what we have just started. So invitations have been sent out through email. So you are considered eligible because of your cumulative GPA from your freshman and sophomore year. If you are applying as a senior, your junior year is also rolled up into that. So that fulfills the NHS scholarship criteria. But then you also have to support your candidacy for the other three pillars. So that's leadership, service, and character. So to do that, students must write a leadership reflection. They must complete a service record so that needs to be, needs to show evidence of the student doing service, performing service hours. <clears throat> and then three teachers, they have to ask for a faculty evaluation. Everything is submitted digitally through Google Classroom. And then that information that they push through to Google Classroom, that is the information we then collate and send on to our faculty council. So our faculty council is made up of five staff members. Every student who puts through a candidacy package will be discussed. And then they have to have three of the faculty council saying yes, and then they will get pushed through. So this is an important slide because it's how to best support your candidacy. All materials are due by Monday, September 30th by 3 p.m. So it's just a little bit past our normal end of day. I do want to remind students to approach the selection process with humility. So be prepared to learn where you're at. Show that you care and that this is something you want to be doing rather than something you have to get done. I want you to take the lead in your own selection process. So the student should be the one emailing questions. The student should be the one reading all NHS material and they should be the ones becoming the experts. 
you should act like a professional going through a professional process. And then you could also use your resources. So in two Thursdays, on Thursday, September 26th, we're going to have current NHS members before school and after school running what we call like help desks or in their own information sessions where students who are putting their packages together can come, ask questions, ask them to read through what they are going to submit and hopefully get everything settled before that due date of Monday the 30th. And that is all that we have for you. So now is the time where you can ask questions to maybe clear up some of the stuff if I went over it too quickly. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so service, they have to have 20 hours of service. It can be things completed freshman, sophomore, junior year. It has to be from three different activities. They can't have all 20 all in one. Yep, so they can go to the original person that they did the service with, they can sign off. Or because we use, um, we have RWL hours here at school, they can ask their advisor to sign off on it if it's something that has previously been submitted to our system. Correct. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Other questions, yes? Yes, it can be stuff outside the school. Most of the stuff will be service from outside the school. International service? Yeah, if it's international service, that's fine too. And if somebody originally signed off on it, you can have your advisor do the second sign. <clears throat> so if you open up the Google Doc that has the assignment, leadership can be if you're on a sports team, if you're in a club, or it can be something smaller, like leadership in the classroom, we really give you wide open range to prove to us that you have leadership capabilities. Yep. Leadership can be outside of the school. It does not have to be tied to the school. We know that there are only so many like sports captains, only so many club presidents that are out there. So we want students to think of that particular part in a different light so they can use classroom experience, they can use experience at church, they can use experience pretty much doing anything as long as they are proving that they are a leader and they describe it in such a manner that it's clear to the faculty council. The three faculty recommendations, it can be from their advisor and teachers, but we don't want um, like club advisors or coaches. We want it more in the academic setting. Yep. If a teacher has left BHS, it would be the student's responsibility to be able to contact them the way that we take the faculty information is through a Google form, so we can easily send that Google form to the person as long as we know that they are willing to do that. Yes, sir. A club faculty advisor can sign off of service, yes. Yep. Any that I'm missing? Yes. The faculty um, evaluation is really, really simple. You just have to ask the staff member and say, like, would you please fill out this form on my behalf? We have already sent the Google form to staff, so they already have it in their possession. So all they need to do then is say, okay, I'm filling it out for this student. They click on the link, type in the student's name, and then answer the few questions. We can certainly send that out again. Yep. 
So sometimes um, there is like the miscommunication that teachers might say like, oh, if I'm writing you a recommendation, it's really not writing a recommendation. It's just filling out a few simple questions. So yeah, we can resend that information to the staff. That's fine. Okay, well again, we really appreciate you taking the time to come tonight. So if you or your student have any further questions, just send them our way. Thank you. <laughs>